many of us are going through very hard struggles on daily basis and we are facing questions that are very very hard to solve many of us are not sure how to deal with challenges and difficulties that we're facing in our daily routine you hear about horrible stories that are taking place in life of siblings of ours close friends family some challenges are even hard to to express and to share because of the great pain the heaviness the trauma that they're pulling the old memories and fears that we're carrying within and we're finding ourselves struggling with negative thoughts with painful thoughts that we don't want to experience but in the same time we do and many of us are finding it hard to explain to ourselves how can it be that if we believe that the Creator is so good, how can it be that there is so much pain and so many people in struggle and sorrow walking on earth? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev once said that this world is not something that is available to find. That even the most wealthiest people, the most successful people, are suffering greatly on earth. And we believe that the Garden of Eden, that heavens exist. That's our belief that it will find us in the world to come. So if this world is not available to find and the Garden of Eden, heavens, is the inherit of the next world, of the world to come, so it must be that we are now in hell. That was the wisdom of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. To help us all understand that there is a certain purpose in the suffering and in the difficulties that we're going through on earth. There is a purpose to every step of our way. And the person with eyes of truth, that is a real truth seeker, will find wisdom installed under every tile that he's tapping on, in every tree that is moving, in every branch, in every store that he's getting into, in every conversation with a random person in the street. The fact is that the Creator is treasuring a huge message in every moment of our life for us to learn from and for us to be corrected by. And we must find a way to nullify ourselves to the heavenly will of the Creator that His intention is to purify us and to uplift us and to bring us to the real correct place for the success, the eternal success of our souls. For an example, the verse is saying, Vaishman Yeshurun Vaivat, that when the people of Israel, that one of the names of our nation is Yeshurun, when they got all the bounty and all the wealth, they were eating and eating and eating until they became so fat that they started to kick the godly kingship away from them. They became so spoiled because of the wonderful goodness that was influent on them in great bounty, that they forgot that they should have gratitude for those wonderful gifts and blessings. And they found themselves ungrateful. And for that, the Creator had to educate us with certain lessons that were less pleasant than enjoying the bounty and the holy wealth. Sometimes in life when, for an example, 
you're married to a good woman that she's very nice to you and she's very polite and she's modest and she's kind to you, you become ungrateful. Sometimes when you have children that are acting in a nice way and they're polite and they're nice to you and helpful and, and doing good things in the house, it's hard for you to appreciate. You see those things like they're, you take them for granted when really it's all grace and kindness of the Creator and we should be full of gratitude and appreciation to the people who are around us. But sometimes we forget. We forget that we make money and we can cover our expenses and we don't have enough gratitude for that. We forget many, many things. And the Creator, with His loving kindness, He must wake us up or else we will spend 70 years of our lives in deep, deep sleep, disconnected from reality. How many times people talked to you and told you certain things that were mind-blowing and, and eyes-opening of you humbly recognizing that you were so off track, that you were so far from the truth, that you were so disconnected to reality, from reality. And the Creator, He looks at our life from an eternal angle, from a higher perspective. And we are experiencing our life as separated individuals that lives in a temporary world. And we're finding certain experiences in our lives hard to grasp and hard to understand and how hard to, to, to perceive and to interpret but only because that we want a certain success and a certain quiet right away. And it's an understandable desire. We can understand a person who wants to live good life and doesn't want to suffer. But meanwhile, we should also open our eyes to surrender to the precise supervision of the Creator on us, that really He is helping us just to climb back on the path and to rise and shine in the light of the real wisdom of God, the light of His good will, and to become straight and to face Him in attributes of kindness. The loving kingship of the Creator is being revealed through honest people, through righteous people, through generous people, through loving and respectful people, and not through villains, and not through evil people, not through angry people, or depressed and broken people. When you're down and broken, you're not able to shine. But when you're up and you're positive, immediately you can affect people using that light that is shining from your soul. Immediately. You're going to smile to people. You're going to be positive with them. You're going to love them. You're going to show your love. You're going to w greet them with a warm and smiley face. Your heart will shine upon them. The kingship of the Creator must find a vessel to, to hover upon. And therefore we need to accept every challenge in our life as as a preparation for the godly light, for the divine spirit to hover upon us. And it will when we will do things with truth. Because Hashem Elohim Emet, our God is the God of truth. And why He is the God of truth? Not because He desires the truth. Because it's the simple truth that He is our God, that He exists. And because that He simply exists, therefore He is the God of truth. You don't need to be a genius to understand that. He is the God of truth because He is the God and it's the truth. And when you want to channel His light to you and through you out to the world, you need to create similarity 
You need to make a bridge for that light to shine through you out to the world. And that similarity, that bridge, is the truth. And like that He is the God of truth, we should be truthful people. We should be people of truth. So no matter where you are, no matter what you go through, you should always be a person of truth. And even when you go through difficult situations and hard times and challenges with no end, that you find them hard to interpret and to explain to yourself, and of course not to other people who even depends on you and waiting for answers from you, you must express your heart and be honest and truthful. And you can say, yes, I'm hurt right now. Yes, it's a very hard time for me right now. Yes, I'm struggling with my faith right now. Yes, I'm not sure that I know the answer to that question right now. It's written in the Talmud, in the Gemara, that Hashem said to Moses, Teach your mouth to say, I don't know, that you will not caught making mistakes. Moses, he needs to learn to teach himself how not to answer without thinking first. He must learn and teach himself to be a person of truth, to be able to admit, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm still brainstorming. I'm still thinking. I'm still trying to grasp the message of God. It's not a shame not to know. And it's a great, great um, quality in the person that he will always shine the light of truth of no matter which level that he's holding. In every moment, in every step, in every level, in every floor, you should just be a person of truth and to shine that to your surroundings. And then you became a vessel for the light to be channeled through you and the heavenly blessing will hover upon you and your surroundings and all your loved ones. Amen. Thank you so much.